one of the great things with Foreigner is that we're only at the beginning of the game. We can explore so many aspects of that universe. The team never stopped working on that game, and it improved on all levels, and that is the beauty of a live game. Being a live game brings a whole set of different challenges. Before we were launching movies, we're making a game, launching it, and then you were just witnessing the reaction. Now, it's an amusement park. It's a constant shipping, constant working. We delivered more than 5,000 new pieces of content. We're delivering new content every week. We had four big events, starting at Halloween, and we just held our fourth one with Heroes March. It's a big challenge, but in the end, you're never bored, and you're constantly also surprised by the reaction of your players and that's really uh, enlightening. That first year was two things. It was really tough, but it was super exciting. We learned a lot uh, from the community. We did some mistakes. We fixed most of those. Some of the biggest learning we had, it's how to balance fighting game. Balancing means something really tough in the world of form. Today, we start to have the correct tools in terms of evaluating characters time of collecting the community feedback. On For Honor, the community has been at its core since the beginning. We work very closely with uh, the top players of our game. We bring them to the studio every couple months for workshops where they test upcoming content and they give us very helpful feedback. And that collaboration keeps going once they leave. Now we have what we call the Rift the rapid iteration fight test. Our designers can directly speak with the players, speak about what they want to change and why. We do the Warriors Den every week. It's a weekly show we do on Twitch. It's every Thursday at noon, Montreal time. We can speak with our community, present what we're working on, what's coming out, but also what will be coming in the future. I think our job evolved from game developer to entertainers. It's an ongoing relation, and that's really making the game better because of the feedback they gave us and because of that ongoing discussion and work with them. If I had to describe the For Honor community in one sentence, I would say they are a hardcore, meme-loving group of nice people. We didn't have really a place where you could practice and take your time and train yourself on your hero or against specific heroes. And that's why we've added the arena mode you can configure the boat to perform specific chains of movements with those characters that you're not necessarily good fighting against. Helps you become better against those guys. After the launch, we discovered some issues on the connectivity and the stability of the game. And even by improving and fixing a lot of bugs, we never reached the quality we wanted For Honor to be at. The team really believed in uh, moving to dedicated servers. All the online architecture, they had to rebuild everything. Now, the quality of life for a player is much better. There's no more host migration, for example. We don't have any more NAT management. So if you're a red NAT, yellow NAT, green NAT, we don't care you're playing on servers. We reached a ceiling with our previous architecture. Now, it's our floor. So we can just improve, and the team keeps working to improve it over and over again. It's only the beginning, and we have so many ideas to make the game grow that it's, uh, it's mind-blowing. For me, E3 is a chance to reconnect with a lot of people and to show to everybody that For Honor is in a state now that if you want to fight with a sword, that's the game to be in. We have some cool surprise. We can maybe show you something. Don't miss it.